So I walked to the center of London Bridge and I just want you to give you a little panoramic around here just to show you the view you get of London by night. Hello, welcome back you guys. Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London. Tonight, we are gonna have a look at London by night all along the South Bank. Now an amazing atmosphere here. As you can see, we have Tower Bridge in the background. So I wanna take you from Tower Bridge just down to Millennium Bridge. And from there, we're gonna to head towards the London Eye and onto Westminster Bridge. So I wanna show you the colors, the atmosphere. It's a beautiful balmy night in London, about 25 degrees. Um, everybody's out drinking, partying, having a great time. So stay tuned. Uh, this should be a good one. My friend Maureen is with me. She's a bit camera shy, however, but I, I'll try and get her on later on. So we're gonna have a look here and end up for a nice, lovely, cold gin and tonic somewhere. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, please like and subscribe. Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot. Stay tuned. I'll be with you for the next hour. Right, you guys, I have to bring you up on the bridge just to see sunset in London. We will, of course, be taking a little trip along the South Bank by night as well to soak up the atmosphere. But look at the colors of that sky. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? And here we have City Hall. The offices of the Greater London Mayor and the Greater London Authority, the Shard. But it's the sky I wanted you to see, you guys. Sunset in London, approximately 9.10. It's the 10th of June. Must be about 23 degrees. Maybe 63, 64 Fahrenheit. Here's the walkie-talkie building. And there you have a great view of some of the Beautiful buildings in London, 22 Bishopsgate, the Gherkin, Scalpel, and the Tower of London. The only castle in London, you guys, 1078. Protector of the River Thames. So, that's a good way to start the tour, Sunset. And we're going to walk all along the South Bank. We're going to take you as far as the Millennium Bridge. We'll get some amazing views of the Globe Theatre, London Bridge itself, beautiful buildings along the way, all lit up, all the bridges all lit up. We'll head around the back of Southwark and Borough Market, connecting towards the Museum of Modern Art, the Tate. And then we'll pick it up again at the London Eye and Westminster Bridge. So stay tuned, loads to come, you guys. Right, so we're going to make our way down from Tower Bridge now. I just want you to see a bit of the atmosphere in the area. And what's happening, we'll soak it up. Everyone's here to get their last view of sunset. And here we are, of course, on Tower Bridge. These are the bascules. You can actually walk across these. There's glass floors on them, if you're brave enough. But for future reference, just make sure you have a look at the other tours we've done yeah. involving Tower Bridge. It's really bad. It's really bad, we have one of a Tower Bridge lift, which happens about four times a month. We used to only happen about four times a year. 400 times a year, I'm sorry. But now it's about four times a month. So it's a beautiful thing to see as well. Now I'm in a cycle lane, but I just wanted to give you a brief view of the other side of Tower Bridge and the buildings you see off in the distance there that's Canary Wharf that's the other financial district in London and that's where the location of Stratford where the Olympic Games took place so another part of the river that you can explore and if you head on that part of the river straight under Tower Bridge on the Thames Clipper it'll bring you all the way up to Greenwich and another fabulous part of London to explore. And we will be doing a tour on Greenwich soon enough. I want to show you all the amazing features up there. So stay tuned and like and subscribe for that. We'll be notifying you when they show up. So right now, we're going to head along the South Bank. 
and just for you yourselves, just soak up the atmosphere along the way. So to access it, we need to take the steps here down the bridge along the river. It really does have that summer feel here tonight, a real sticky, balmy night. There's plenty out and about. Enjoying a few drinks, as they should. Thursday, 10th of June, 2021. The weather's been glorious the last month, you guys. And it is very much welcomed after the very wet May we experienced. So the temperatures are due to go up this weekend. Possibly not that hot for some of you guys in really hot countries all over the world, but for us, we uh, definitely feel it. So, we're gonna make our way down the steps here. Please don't mind us passing. And this will take you back out onto the South Bank. And the place is buzzing. So. We can take that direction. We'll bring you to the other side of the bridge. Some great little pubs and restaurants along the way. There's a Greek restaurant here. This guy sells some lovely hot nuts, sweet peanuts and almond nuts. Let's head around this direction. <laughs> now we're going to get Tower Bridge just lighting up for the evening. And we'll get some amazing views of that in just a few minutes. So it's just sunset, so we're just at that dusky stage, but hopefully it'll darken up shortly and you'll see all the incredible lights here in London. A lot of young people out and about. It's a long time since we were out around this time, Maureen. Maureen, my friend, is with me. She's camera shy, though, you guys, so I'm not going to torment her by keep asking her to go on camera. They're all drinking. Now, people always ask me, is it legal to drink outside of the pubs? Technically, no, but it's not really frowned upon. I mean, one of the biggest activities here is during the summertime when it's really warm, people will head to the park and have a champagne picnic in the park. And I have never known of anyone that's been arrested for that, so I wouldn't worry too much. So people tend to hang out here on the side streets with a can of beer or a glass of wine, as long as they're not causing any trouble. People tend to be quite respectful, as it were. Now, naturally, it would be an excuse for the police to arrest somebody if they thought they were being too rowdy, etc. But as far as having a bottle of champagne or a bottle of wine is concerned, absolutely no problem. And I'm just going to turn you around. I want to show you the bridge. So I'll do it quite slowly so you can see it lit up. I'll wait a minute until I get a really good view of it. Here is an incredible view of the Tower of London, built by William the Conqueror in 1078. And this is the beauty of this part of town, particularly when, the, when you're in the city. The contrast of the buildings, the old and the new, making it tremendously unique. That little archway you see there was known as Traitor's Gate. and. Um, it always fascinates me to think that prisoners would head up the River Thames and head in through that gate into the tower and never see daylight again. I often wonder how Anne Boleyn must have felt, or not Anne Boleyn, obviously she was executed in there, but Elizabeth I, her daughter, spent time in there. And she didn't know her fate. How must she have felt in the cells of the dungeon knowing her own mother was executed there how many years later? So there you have her, Tower Bridge lit up. Now, I'll get a better view of it when it's a bit darker, but this one, as I mentioned, I wanted you to see just the atmosphere 
of South Bank by night. A lot of people getting their selfies and videos around here. Now, this rather odd shaped building you'll see here is City Hall. You'll be familiar with that because some of you will have seen my other trips around London. This is the official office of the Lord Mayor of Greater London, City Can, and it's home to the London Greater Authority. Uh, it's affectionately known as the Egg Slicer Building, I think for obvious reasons. Now, I just recently did a video on the City of London and the differences between the City of London and Greater London and what separates them. They have two separate mayors. So stay, keep an eye out for that one. That will further explain it a bit more to you. So the objective of this walk is that you can actually walk all the way from Tower Bridge all the way down to the London Eye and it's a straight route. In total, it would probably take you about 45 minutes. But it's a bit lively up here. You would have seen it in my intro. I just wanted to show you the atmosphere and how great it is to see people out and about and enjoying themselves again, you guys. It is so well deserved. But as I mentioned, a lot of people have their own drinks with them. Music food stalls around the area. They're just hanging out in these gorgeous huts. There's the Supremes for you. Not quite dark enough yet, but here we go. I'll show you Tower Bridge now. You'll get a better view of it. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Now, Tower Bridge, I have reiterated this like a million times, but I, in my guiding career, I always have to explain this over and over to people, is not London Bridge. Tower Bridge is a bascule and suspension bridge, just under 200 years old. Tower Bridge is London Bridge, it's over 2,000 years old. First bridge, bridge crossing on the River Thames. There's been five bridges on London Bridge's site, but we will be approaching it in a moment, so I'll just tell you a bit more. This will be slight repetition for some of you who are calling yourself my groupies, which I'm delighted to have. Uh, but for those of you tuning in, this is for the benefit of those that haven't heard this before. So yeah, that's, uh, as previously mentioned there, the battleship HMS Belfast. So we're going to leave the young ones and we're going to head down here and we're going to go as far as London Bridge and see what's happening around there. So basically on a Thursday night, you guys, it's kind of office night out. So people tend to go home to their families on Friday and the weekends, Fridays and Saturdays. And this is the night they all get together on a Thursday night and they party in the city. When you work nine to five, Monday to Friday, chance would be a fine thing. Not so much for tour guides, because we tend to be the busiest when all you guys are off, which is weekends and bank holidays. So look at the buildings, they're beautiful there. The sky is absolutely gorgeous tonight. It's quite balmy, isn't it, Morris? Now, another great idea is a lot of the boats will be taking night cruises soon. And one of my favorite is the Thames Clipper because you can actually use your Oyster card. Now the Oyster card is more expensive than a tube journey, but you can buy like a day pass, which will take you all the way from Millbank, which is where MI6 and MI5 is located and the American Embassy, the area known as Battersea and Vauxhall, that area. Take it all the way up past the Houses of Parliament and Westminster. There's a stop at the London Eye. There's a stop here in London Bridge. There's a stop at the Tower of London and there's one all the way up at Greenwich. So you can use it as transport and Londoners themselves tend to do so whenever we have the dreaded tube strike, which occurs not in a while now, thank God. We haven't had one in a while, but uh, just to show you where you are right now. So the signage above there, these people pass. So you have more London, the Riverside area, 
That's a beautiful connection between Tooley Street, which runs parallel to here, and the South Bank. City Hall, which we saw, Tower Bridge, which we saw, Pottersfield Park, was actually um, a burial site for peasants at one time. But we're heading towards Hayes Galleria, London Bridge, and London Bridge City Pier. Look at this along here. Now, it hasn't quite set yet for sun, but when this lights up, you guys, it's like a little Parisian boulevard along here. So it's lovely for an evening stroll. Still quite bright though, isn't it? So Hayes Gallery is coming up. This is a listed building, um, you guys. It was extensively bombed during World War II. <coughs> Excuse me, the area we're in is called the Larder of London, the street parallel to here. The Pool of London, which would have been above Tower Bridge, was a major international shipping hub. So the Larder of London, because the likes of the tea clippers, the spices, the silk merchants, the banana merchants from all over the world docked here and unloaded their goods here in this Hayes Gallery. It was formerly a wharf, and the direct translation of that is warehouse at river front, a wharf. But now it's a listed building, so this was extensively bombed during World War II um, and rebuilt. Now it's a mixed-use building. So it features restaurants and cafes and bars and lovely little craft store, market stalls, outdoor dining, as you can see here on the river. Go ahead. Just show you the inside now, one minute. So you see you have a choice of places that you can uh, dine and drink on the river, you guys. This one is the Horny Man at Hayes, it's called. It's a lovely place to chill out there on the River Thames. This is Hayes Galleria. And right there in the centre, which I've done a tour on before, is an example of one of the tea clippers that would bring the spices and the tea, the various teas, to London. Yeah. There's another place you can head into. stunning colors in the sky you guys now you see in the distance that beautiful orange glow that is and we'll step up on the wall there there is London Bridge how pretty does London Bridge look London Bridge it's actually changing color, so it's like uh, blues and purples and reds and oranges. Beautiful buildings again, all lit up for you guys. So we do have a London by Night tour. We may meet them coming towards us actually. My wonderful colleague Matt does an incredible tour along the South Bank from the London Eye in the reverse direction. And he brings you all the way up towards London Bridge. That's one not to be missed while you're in London. And you'll get an idea of some of the sights you will see along the way. We are doubling back here towards the Hayes Galleria. where I just went back just to get the right shot, you guys. You should want to get sunset and the bridges all at one. And the darker colors, rather.
so this was the real shot I wanted to get so I just wanted to wait for it to get just that little bit darker so I double back That's you guys cool. just so as you can see there she is look how beautiful that is all lit up at night so not only will you do your tours during the day don't forget London by night is spectacular and all this lighting that you see is courtesy of 2012 Olympic Games so we still benefit from it today so we're gonna continue on but I just wanted to show you how beautiful she looks all lit up you guys so we're gonna continue on towards London Bridge and then we're gonna head around Borough Market and down past the Golden Hind towards the Millennium Bridge and we'll pick it up again at the Hungerford Bridge straight over to Westminster so I'm just taking you around here again you guys just to see this beautiful see how pretty it is and you can have your little drinks and something to eat here in the horny man at Hayes it's called um, if one positive we can turn any positives from all the negatives of 2020 it's London has turned into an outdoor dining mecca, essentially. Uh, it's a haven for outdoors now, and it's fabulous, especially on the river here. But let's continue towards the bridge, and we'll see what's happening around London Bridge. So, by the way, well, I have a couple of minutes. Thank you so much for subscribing, you guys. It's always great to hear your suggestions and your comments. If you have any questions, I'll wait till I pass here. Please don't hesitate to ask. And as I've said a hundred times before, if you're interested us in us visiting any other parts of London, that you yourself personally love while you're here. Here we are again at Hayes Galleria. Please don't hesitate to ask. I'll be delighted to explore everywhere for you. We have so many more videos in the pipeline. There's so much more to do and see in London. So any particular suggestions you have, I or any of the rest of my colleagues that will be doing some tours too will be happy to accommodate. And of course, if you have any questions, I might do a little Q&A with you guys on a one-to-one -one, one of these nights so I can help you plan your trips and give you some of the top tips of London and the do's and the don'ts, essentially. Um, I can explain to you about the tube and the oyster cards and anything that's going to make your trip more special and more convenient. We always say the best way to see London is with a guide. And one of our guides will take you to any part of London you desire. We have an amazing selection of tours that cover literally every corner of London. So why not avail of the service and don't lose time to wandering around and using maps when we'll be happy to guide you around on a pay as you please basis. We believe everybody has the right to afford a professional guide around London. Now you got some more outdoor dining here. And there's been a lot of new pop-up places, pop-up food markets and just drinks. So no appointments here, but uh, it's all table service at the moment which is great, no more three deep at a bar trying to get a drink. That's where I was saying to you guys, the Thames Clipper picks up right there. And the Clipper stops off here at London Bridge. And with that will take you up as far as the tower and then all the way up to Greenwich and you can use your Oyster card on that. Or as previously mentioned, you can get a date, a day pass. Now, there's the multicolored London Bridge, which is changing colors as we speak. It's going to take us up onto the steps of London Bridge. And we're going to make our way straight down towards 
Millennium Bridge, which was used in the Harry Potter movies. It's affectionately known by Londoners as the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. So, uh, I don't know, Maureen. My friend has just asked me what is that. It looks like a. It's like one of those. Um, is it a houseboat of some sort? It's a lovely little pink lit up boat there. It's not a clipper, unless it's some form of novelty boat. We'll be doing a little bit of research on that. Um, oh, speaking of which, um, one of my last tours in, um, that I will be publishing, uh, publishing soon was around Marble Arch and this massive construction taking place there. And I've just done a bit of research. They are oh, building some form of a massive green mound with an observation tower at the top. So it's going to be higher than Marble Arch itself. And it's a temporary structure, it's an arch structure. But there is going to be a huge amount of queues because you're going to be able to get views all over Hyde Park and all over London. So anyway, we'll show you that in our next video, which will be on Marble Arch right between the buildings there we won't make it out right now but that is the monument to the great fire of london and this is the famous london bridge it's been a crossing on this bridge for over two thousand years now this is the fifth bridge on the site the fourth bridge in 1973 was bought by an american millionaire and it's now in lake havasu in arizona there's a rumor that he thought he was buying tower bridge but i assure you he didn't make that mistake he knew exactly what he was buying so when you get to this section there are steps up onto the bridge that you can take and that affords you fabulous views again of tower bridge behind me oh, go. So we're going to head up onto the bridge and connect back onto the River Thames through Borough Market. There's helicopters overhead. So you see that's an amazing place there for a selfie. You'll see the people all up on top of the bridge taking their pictures of Tower Bridge by night so I'm just going to turn around here and see if we can see it now there's not much of a view of it there right now but I think that we can head towards the next bridge now as you come up these steps you go to the left then and that will take us down in towards the borough market area So London Bridge has a rather bleak history as well. Um, they used to place the heads of executed prisoners on spikes on London Bridge. Most notably one of those was William Wallace of Braveheart fame. So as we're here, you guys, I couldn't miss it. So I walked to the center of London Bridge. And I just want you to give you a little panoramic around here, just to show you the view you get of London by night from London Bridge. There's the shard in all her glory, 1,016 feet high. But we're going to continue around to the other side, and that's where we're going to walk next. I'm going to try and get the road out of it. I'm sorry about the road part. That's what I need to do. Sorry. So all coming together. That's the other side of the bridge. And the dome you see in the distance there is the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral.
and we will just scoot around again but we're going to walk in that direction how beautiful the sky is you guys okay so next up is going to be along the bridge and we're going to head through borough food market yeah the shard so the shard people always ask me this is it completed do you see at the top there you see it was built to resemble a shard of broken glass that was the idea behind it Renze Piano the architect 1016 feet high it was the tallest building in Western Europe but it's since been surpassed I believe by one in Paris now I need to research the name of that building um, has an infinity style swimming pool on the 52nd floor I mean that always amazes me I mean it's in the Shangri-La Hotel um, so you are quite literally swimming in the clouds I did meet the abseiling window cleaners up the top of the shard one time and I was at that observation deck right at the very top where it hits the air and they literally jumped out on the other side it was so scary I couldn't believe it I just said to them have you any fear and they're like this is the office I said okay so I haven't seen them in years I'm assuming that was at the beginning when they first opened up the shard so I'm assuming they actually couldn't get insurance for them well we just last view there of it before we leave and we'll make our way around Borough into Borough hopefully and around by Southwark Do you hear that gust of wind folks? That's just by the river though. Just bear with me a second. So we'll reconnect with you again as soon as we come out on by the river. Right you guys, I just wanted to show you this. So this is outdoor dining. Now I'm up high here just to show you where they're all hanging out. We are right underneath London Bridge Station here and everyone is hanging out there having a good time. There's a great bar and restaurant. This is the back of Borough Food Market. So again, loads of places to get a nice bite to eat in the area. So to show you exactly how to get around here to reconnect so you see here, there's the restaurant and the bar down there, and back on the bridge section. So the cathedral is there. It's a little dark, but that would have been the place of worship, we believe, of William Shakespeare. So that's pretty cool, the atmosphere down there, you guys. Place to eat and drink. And I'm pretty sure there's the beautiful cathedral, you guys. So the cathedral. Now there's been a cathedral on that site dating back to the 1100s. Edmund Shakespeare is buried on the ground, so it's most likely the place of worship of the Shakespeare family themselves. So we're going to head down here. We'll see the atmosphere inside at Borough Food Market. Now all door, outdoor amazing bars and restaurants down the steps and that will bring us right back out on along the river oh, now I recently published a Southwark or a, a borough food market tour so please have a look at that at free tours by foot to the river they get a bit weirded out if you're using a, a camera in here but we're only taking a little shortcut to connect with the river. Face is buzzing, you guys. Right along here. Oh, 
<laughs> and we're gonna take a little turn around here to the right and connect back out onto the river, you guys. So this was the location of the Clink prison, the famous medieval prison here in London. I'm going to head by the Golden Hind, one of the oldest pub pubs in London on the river. And this is our direction. Okay, so these walk with me's are also to help you navigate your way around London. So, for example, you're around Borough and you want to find out how to get to the Millennium Bridge or the Tate, just click on the videos you guys and just follow the walk so all for your convenience we have a replica here of the Golden Hind that was uh, the ship that Sir Francis Drake circumnavigated the globe on and when it's open up again which it will be very soon you can actually visit on board one other very famous ship well it's a tea clipper actually is the Cully Sark that you can also visit on board that was held the title of the fastest tea clipper in the world and that is situated at Greenwich also there's the um, Maritime Museum there you have the painted hall that was used in several movies including the Harry Potter movies and you have Nelson's very own military jacket with the actual bullet wound that killed him during the Battle of Trafalgar but more on that it's a bit dark I'm trying to get you to see this properly not to worry we're gonna get back out in the river so the old Thameside pub another pub there on the river that you can enjoy and here's the famous clink museum where the term clink actually gets its name. We believe it's on the Matapaic in reference to the clinking of the armor on the jailers. We're locking them up here in this medieval prison. And I assure you, conditions were not favorable for prisoners back then. <laughs> oh. Sorry, my friend Maureen here. We had to navigate our way around the Jamaican on his wheels. He was a lot of fun with his music in the background. Was that ska or Jamaican? I'm not sure, but anyway. So again, loads of lovely little, these, all these beautiful little corners and cobblestone streets all around the back of London by night. And this is going to take us back out on the river beautiful pub around the corner now as well um, that's in the pipeline as well ladies and gents we're gonna do a little historic pub tour and we will be adding that onto our selection of tours during the summertime here in London so I will be joining my colleague Rob and we will be taking you on a little tour around some of the most historic pubs in London possibly one of our favorite subjects here's the clink you guys that I was telling you about the medieval prison 1144 to 1780 and actually here's some of the jail cells that were away down the end I mean this place horror stories that you can read about torture your friends it says you can actually take a tour of this place terrifying medieval prison just want to show you the front of the door here as well. So that museum will be opened up soon. That's for the dark side of London's history, which is a favorite of mine. Prisons and museums. Right, we'll go a bit more colorful again. Light and happy around the corner here. Now we're gonna see the beautiful Anchor Inn. This was a big favorite of Tom Cruise when he was in London, actually. A bit of movie trivia, he used to uh, drink in here during the Mission Impossible movie was being filmed here but over the years the likes of Charles Dickens Samuel Pepys assuming every writer under the sun drank in here 
and a premier in there what a fabulous location to stay in london and here is your anchor inn again you guessed it outdoor seating on the river thames so i'm going to get a shot of this beautiful pub for you over here in the corner and there's the outdoor seating area and here she is how beautiful does that look? After a long day touring, a great place for a refreshing cold pint of ale. Now you guys, I'm just going to bring you up here. So behind me is Southwark Bridge, actually the least used bridge in London. The end of this bridge to the left actually is where the original Globe Theatre was located. And we believe that William Shakespeare lived around here. Um, because of the church of worship uh, his brother buried there and we believe he shopped in borough market and the globe theater was located at the end of this bridge but they were showing a rather tedious production of shakespeare's henry the eighth and during that production the producers of the show were none too happy about the audience were tremendously bored during the production they were actually falling asleep so the producers of the show decided they wanted to jazz it up a little bit and make it more exciting. So that the ingenious idea of firing off two live cannons in the middle of a wooden building in the middle of the performance. And it really was a genius idea. They burnt the place to the ground, you guys. But uh, an American playwright and producer called Sam Wanamaker arrived here in London. And he was so disappointed and confused as to why there was no amazing dedication to Shakespeare he actually built the Globe Theatre a replica of the original and we will be approaching that very shortly so we're gonna head down here towards the Millennium Bridge and you'll see the white bridge in the distance And the white bridge in the distance is the one they used in the Harry Potter movies, you guys. And it was called the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. We'll be approaching it now in a minute. The Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Because when it was first opened, um, it structurally, it was, well, it wasn't sound and people were wobbling from side to side and uh, they were terrified. So um, the Queen had opened it up and in fact they had to close it down again to secure the, the structure of the bridge. And it was reopened two years later after all that hassle of opening it up. So the, Nickname stuck, the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. And this will be coming to the end of part one of our tour. And as you can see, all oh, plenty of diners out and about enjoying this beautiful evening in London. I expect we'll be meeting our guests on the London night tour very shortly. My colleague Matt will be conducting that tonight, coming in the reverse direction. See the beautiful St. Paul's Dome in the background there, you guys. A masterpiece of the widely regarded Leonardo da Vinci of London, Sir Christopher Wren. So just so as you know, the white bridge that's sparkling in front of you is the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Now that connects St. Paul's across the river to what I've been speaking about all along here, the Globe Theatre. And my favourite museum in London, which is a pretty big thing to say, 
because there's a selection of so many amazing free museums, the British Museum, Victoria and Albert Museum, Natural History and Science Museum, you have the British Tate Art Gallery, the Hunterian Museum, but the Tate Museum of Modern Art literally has it all and they have some very special exhibitions that take place once in a blue moon. Maureen and myself were unfortunate because we were so anxious to visit the Andy Warhol exhibit. It's the Swan Pub, you guys. And then the pandemic hit, so they did extend it, but it just wasn't possible to get a ticket then in the end. Demand was so rich, but uh, here is a beautiful globe, you guys. I'm just going to stand up here so you can get a a look at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre by night. Look how pretty it looks. Had to get special dispensation, would you believe, for that patch roof. The only patch roof building left in London, and that's because there was a slight paranoia dating back to 1666 when patch roofs on wooden buildings were massive contributing factors to the spread of the Great Fire of London. But what an amazing thing to do when you come to London. They have an outdoor theatre and they put on productions of Shakespeare's shows in the outdoor theatre in the summertime. And you can get tickets for as little as like five pounds. I've been to a couple and they are fabulous. So here's a dedication here to Sam Wanamaker. There you go. Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. Make sure you book your tickets before you come. Right, so we're going to pick it back up in a few minutes. We're going to make our way towards the London Eye, but I just want to give you some more visuals just up here. He's throwing bottles around. I'm sure Maureen's okay. She's taking photographs. <laughs> And there's the bridge, you guys. And leads all the way over to St. Paul's Cathedral. And right behind you here is the Museum of Modern Art, the Tate. It's a little difficult to see. It's not really lit up very well. But there is the Tate, former Bankside Power Station. As it was formerly a power station, it now affords massive industrial spaces for artists to exhibit their work. An estimated one million visitors, no, four million, I think, visitors annually. And the only building to be opened twice by Her Majesty the Queen. Okay, you guys, I'll pick this right back up again very soon at the London Eye. Heather, which So just after the Tate, you guys, I just wanted to bring you up here on the Millennium Bridge. And you will see in the distance there, St. Paul's. So you can walk like I'm halfway along on the bridge right now. But right now what I'm going to do is spin around and wait till you see this. This is just amazing. Okay. 
And one last time. It's just the colors are beautiful and it's such a lovely warm night, you guys. there you go so this is going to be our next direction uh, down the south bank folks we're going to head past this amazing building here which is the sea container building and you'll see the pride flag you guys so happy pride everyone now pride celebrations are actually delayed this year because of the pandemic dare i mention it i don't even like mentioning it anymore but june month is pride month in london so the pride flags are everywhere and my friend maureen has just pointed this out to me so this is relatively new and she we're going to walk in that direction so that's why you'll see a lot of pride flags around london for this month this bridge in front of us is blackfriars bridge and that was opened in 1869 by Queen Victoria. Now that section of the bridge is the newer part of the bridge. That section is Blackfriars train station. So it's very easy access this area. You can do so from this bridge here. There's the train station there, but there's also St. Paul's is right across the bridge here. But Blackfriars, all those are solar panels on top and 13% of the electricity in the solar energy used in that building is, is from solar energy rather okay let's continue on there's a few noisy characters coming so you guys i just wanted to show you this my friend maureen is going to show you watch here now as she's walking across but in a minute there's no sign of her see her shadow is delayed <laughs> that's epic you go again maureen so watch now the shadows with her but wait till she's gone it's following her oh my god that's great it's a little art installation here it's like a delayed shadow and here's a few coming the opposite side nobody there but shadows are coming through that's so cool oh you scan the barcode and it creates its own shadows is that it oh my god I'm after doing that shit and here we go so there's nothing there but it's just the Maureen is going to walk across again. And she's going to be followed by shadows in a second. There we go. <laughs> That's quite creepy. It's a very cool art installation. It's called Shadowing by... Who's it by? I'm going to keep the camera on it there for a minute. By Chunko and Rosier. And there's a scanner barcode and then it just vents its own shadows. There we go. There's another little one. It's quite bizarre, quite creepy actually. There you go. So this is one of the more famous pubs on the river, you guys. The Founders Arms. It can be quite difficult to get a table here. But lovely lit lamps. So your view is on the river again. So as I say, you're spoiled for choice for places to eat and drink on the river. And we're back down what I like to call the little boulevards of the South Bank. It's beautiful old lamps. And it'll brighten up just around here again. It's the Founders Arms. Right on the river, which I am sure we will be including in our historic pub tour. So don't want to reveal too much about these pubs until then. 
And there's your entrance to Blackfriars Station. So that's probably the easiest place for you to come off the underground to get to this immediate area. Keeping quiet so you can hear that screeching. <laughs> so that's Wallaloo Bridge, you guys. Also known as the Ladies Bridge of London by Giles Gilbert Scott. Ladies Bridge, because when the men were called to World War II, Construction on the bridge had already begun and somebody had to step up and it was the ladies of London who did so. They donned their construction belts, they got out their tools and off they went to work. So that bridge mostly constructed by the ladies of London. So no surprise then, it's the only bridge in London that was ever finished on time and under budget. And this goes across to Somerset House, the largest 19th century building in Britain where Fashion Week takes place every year. Yeah, Primarily the tax offices of London. And over here, <coughs> excuse me, a lot more action taking place again. So I'm just going to go out to this viewing point here again and just do a little spin around so you can see everything. There's people down on our makeshift beaches there, you guys. We don't see the sandy beaches of London very often. coming back into Party Central right now, so. <laughs> National Theatre. Likes of Dame Maggie Smith. Lawrence Olivier, Oliver Reed, I'm trying to think of 
many actors that have all performed on stage in there. Boys are saying hello. Say hello to the guys. Hi, guys. Hello. hello. <laughs> and we're going to make our way under Woolloo Bridge down towards spectacular London Eye, all lit up by night. It's a beautiful pink colour at the moment. Sometimes it'll change colour depending on what's happening. So for example, you'll see it up in the distance there. That's where we're making our way towards. For example, when Britain won gold in the Olympics, uh, the last Olympic Games, every time they won gold, it was lit up gold during the terrorist attacks in France to show solid solidarity. They lit it up in the French colours of the flag on St. Patrick's Day on a happier note. Um, it's all lit up in green, of course. So it is now owned by Coca-Cola. I was originally owned by British Airways, so that's why we say to take flight on the London Eye. And we're coming up on the Hungerford Bridge. Now the Wall the Woolloo Bridge you see here, so it connects you to the South Bank from the Covent Garden area and an area called Aldwych. So it's easy to access Covent Garden. But when you go on that bridge, you get an amazing view on the right of the 2000 year old city of London. And on the left of the 1000 year old city of Westminster. So this is only Thursday night in London, so you can see how lively it is, you guys. So you can only imagine what it's like on a Friday and a Saturday night here. Now, we have a lot of staycationers here at the moment, but so that's why there isn't an awful big crowd actually walking on the South Bank. But ordinarily in the height of summer when the airports and the flights all start landing and coming back to see us, this area will be packed. we're coming up in loads of other places for I mean literally you were spoiled for choice for food and drinks and outdoor seating and here are the skateboarders I didn't think they'd be still here at this hour but boys having a ball I'm trying to find, uh, I've often seen him in here all the time actually, is young Rocco Ritchie. He's always skateboarding in there. He's Madonna's son and Guy Ritchie, the director's son. Looks so like her too, but I can't seem to see him there tonight. And here we are, you guys. So it is a short walk, but it's definitely a lively one getting a bit closer to the London Eye. You can see her off in the distance there. So I hope you're enjoying this London by night as much as myself and Maureen are. We're having a good time, but it's nearly 11 now, so it's kind of a bit later than we expected. And this might be horrific to some of you, but I think last orders are 11 o'clock, so I don't think we're gonna get that gin we want, Morris, or that glass of wine. Might have to wait till we get back to our own houses for that. So if you are interested in buying us a coffee tonight, I'd be more than happy to accept you guys. But more importantly, liking and subscribing. I'd rather you were watching the videos 
and if you have anyone that you can recommend to your friends that would like to see what's happening in London please don't hesitate to share them but the more subscribers we get the more videos we get to make and it's always a pleasure for me and thank you all for your continued support by the way love reading all of your comments the handy little seat there and take a seat on now during the daytime when restrictions are 100% lifted they pretty much are at the moment you will see the buskers on the south bank and they're a lot of fun one of my friends is a busker here on the south bank he dresses up as one of the Queen's soldiers he stands on stilts but you usually get some great performances street dancers singers entertainers and they're pretty good a lot of them are aspiring actors or comedians that usually work along here but it also adds to the entertainment value smell here there's loads of food everywhere hot dogs and burgers and it seems to be all really young people around doesn't it all very young but usually at the weekends is when the families are out and about still is a week night this is school night as well you wouldn't think it and we're just under the Hungerford Bridge up on the carousel here and we're going to finish up this section of the tour at the London Eye it's getting a bit lively now so hope you enjoyed yourself as much as we did tonight you guys thanks again as I mentioned for your continued support always love hearing your likes and your comments and your suggestions just let him pass there <laughs> I thank you again between the bridges wow this is a new pop-up bar seems to be in some sort of a garden of some sort it looks beautiful in there oh wow it's a pretty big pop-up we'll be checking that out on another evening ladies and gents I'll take you through there with the camera but for right now one of the most popular tourist attractions in London the London Eye so 32 pods on the London Eye to represent the 31 boroughs and the city of London I'm trying to remember I believe it's something like 325 feet or meters <laughs> it's feet so I'm sorry meters I meant originally at its time of construction it was the largest observation wheel in the world but that's since been surpassed I believe by the one in Caesar's Palace which is about to be outbuilt by the one in Dubai so that is the most popular attraction it was only supposed to stay in the skyline till 2005 and was put up for the Millennium but it proved so popular that they kept it up there right we're gonna head over here and see if we can get it. it's gonna be a bit loud there's a lot of music going on but we'll see if we can just we'll edit over it anyway if necessary just wanted to show you a great view of the London Eye there you go so there she is all pretty you can pre-book your tickets for the London Eye as well before you come to London so thanks for watching ladies and gents I hope you enjoyed London by night it is a pretty special city daytime or nighttime Sinead here with Free Tours, signing out from London. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ladies and gents.